Now we move on to Unit 4 and we will learn about the empires of Asia. And today we'll start about the dynasties of China. From our previous lesson, we learned about the geography of Asia being the biggest continent and uh, the continent with the largest population, which is uh, bigger than the rest of the world combined as far as population is concerned. And the diversity of culture and even the climate and the uniqueness of the civilizations from this continent. So today, we will jump and focus more on the unification under the Sui dynasty because it's practically impossible with our timeline to cover every single dynasty and the details and the accomplishments or achievements of each uh, dynasty. So we will just select a um, few um, important or notable um, dynasties um, during this uh, colorful and interesting history of uh, the dynasties of China. Okay, so have your textbooks ready or log in to Loda USD website and from there launch Clever and from Clever go ahead log in to Cengage Learning and with your student account and password it should lead you to the National Geographic Learning which is our online resource. Go to Unit 4, Chapter 8, Dynasties of China, and Section 1, A Golden Age of Prosperity. And our first lesson is about reunification under the Sui Dynasty, pages 212 to 213. This chapter's essential question, Chapter 8, What legacy did China leave to the modern world? And uh, the objective of this lesson is to explain how the Sui dynasty reunited China and helped it flourish. So our lesson starts from a divided to a reunited uh, China. So under the leadership of Wendy, created a strong central government. He established a written exam for China's officials and embraced the diversity of China's population. This lesson also describes how the Grand Canal improved China's economy by enabling communication and commerce to happen or business to happen. This lesson has two parts. The first part is about when this rule and the second part is about the Grand Canal. The Han Dynasty ruled around 206 BC and uh, ruled China for centuries until weak rulers, rebellions, and powerful Warlords caused its collapse in AD 220. So China was plunged into nearly 400 years of fighting among its people. So it created many small kingdoms. The state belief system of Confucianism declined. Uh, we will learn a little bit more about this later. Uh, though its ethical ideals and Chinese culture survived. A dynasty is a rulership of the same group of people, uh, most of the time members of the same family, um, and with the same political ideals. So after 400 years of civil war in 581, a general by the name Wendy seized power and established a new dynasty called the Sui Dynasty. So Wendy's conquest allowed him to reunify or join together again northern and southern China. To accomplish his goal, he created a strong central government, limiting the power of the local nobles and the bureaucracy. And the government selected new officials by read and examination and made sure they better reflected China's diverse ethnic groups. So the military was organized and brought under Wendy's control. He also issued a new law code uh, that combined northern and southern traditions. He gave farming land to former soldiers, established agriculture in the border regions of the empire, and extended a canal system, which we will talk later. So Wendy encouraged religious tolerance, meaning um, there is no state religion. There's no official religion of the empire. He encouraged religious tolerance, but also promoted the popular religion of Buddhism, when he died unexpectedly in 604, quote-unquote unexpectedly, he left a strong empire for his son and successor, Yang Di. Do you see the resemblance? 
Wendy on the left side and Yang Di on the right side of your screen. Anyway, moving on, let's talk about the Grand Canal. So Yang Di uh, loved luxury and built extravagant palaces in his new eastern capital of Lu Wo Yang. Yang Di extended or continued his father's uh, projects such as restoring and expanding the Great Wall. Well, the idea is to strengthen uh, the northern uh, border and build state granaries to protect the food supply. His important project is the creation or building of the Grand Canal connecting the southern Changjiang with the northern Huanghe. So this incredible 1,200 mile waterway had a road alongside, alongside it and it became a vital communication link. So it united China's economy, allowing southern China's plentiful resources to flow north where the government and armies were located. However, it came to at a cost. Millions of peasants were forced to work on it and many of them died. Well, obviously, the people of China hated this forced labor and the high taxes imposed uh, by both Wendy and Yang Di to pay for such humongous projects. So Yang Di also launched expensive and access unsuccessful wars against Korea. And military campaign required more money. Obviously, you probably uh, still can still remember from our uh, lessons from uh, the feudal system and the European warfares of the kings. And it's very costly. So uh, the military campaign required more money and service from, you know, servants, peasants who are definitely not happy with their forced labor condition. Even though he had this massive project, he became increasingly unpopular. And in 1611, a famine finally pushed the people to, you know, lose it. Um, a rebellion happened. It was a the dynastic cycle at work. So rich and poor rose against Yang Di's harsh rule and he was assassinated. And, you know, around 618, the Sui dynasty proved to be a short-lived dynasty. So the Tang dynasty rose to power after this, and these leaders will continue to unify China. Now let's take a look at this political map or territories of uh, the Sui and the Tang dynasty by 581 to 907. So as you can see here, Parts of China uh, shaded with uh, orange is under the Sui dynasty from 581 to 618. And part of the map that is shaded with purple um, under the Tang dynasty from 618 to 907. You can also see uh, the blue uh, line here, which is the Grand Canal. And uh, the black line is the Great Wall and the purple boundary of modern day China. So overall, that is the Sui and an introduction to the Tang Dynasty who basically reunited China after 400 years of fighting against uh, itself, uh, 400 years of civil war. Okay, now let's go to the review and assess questions. The first one, what is the Sui Dynasty known for? What is its accomplishment? Number two, make inferences. How did the Sui dynasty reflect the pattern of the dynastic cycle? And number three, interpret maps. How might the Grand Canal have improved China's trade network? Okay, you know the drill. Go back to our Google Classroom and open the Review and Assess Assignment, Chapter 8, Section 1, Lesson 1. Fill up the basic information, last name, first name, class period, date. And, of course, our key vocab is reunify. And don't forget the definition of this key vocab. Don't forget the title of the lesson as well. And correct answers in complete sentences using your own words. Okay, so that is our lesson for today. Chapter 8, Section 1.1, Reunification Under the Sway Dynasty.